next stream is known as the Lottery of Life, or just Lottery of Life. I don't care. Having kids is like playing the lottery. That was how the police commissioner put it, with a grin smile and a sigh. He was the man in charge of domestic security. Sometimes you pick a winner and sometimes you pick a loser. Life is like that. You can't control it. Kai responded with a silent nod. Not that he was convinced you could divide people into winners and losers, but that <coughs> excuse me. But that was how they did it here in this country. And what the size of a city, he had no choice but to recognize it as reality because the man who kept the place here believed it. And this nation was known for having the best public safety of all the countries in the region. Every kid in there is a loser, he spat out, jerking his chin towards the ju juvenile prison visible from his office window. Built to hold young criminals, this is this was the largest and most strict most strictly run and most closed gar guarded prison to be seen in any of the neighboring countries. This its treatment to No, that's wrong again. Dang it. Its treatment of its young inmates was also the harshest. You're a foreigner, Kaim, so, so you may not approve, but we have our own way of doing things. I see, Kaim said. Losers are losers. There's nothing you can do to make losers into winners. It's never going to happen. Far from it. If you cotter, coddle losers, they'll just turn into bigger losers and give the decent people a lot of trouble. See what I mean? That's one way of looking at things. Kimes' deliberate irony was lost on the police on the police commissioner. No, it's the only way. If you're going to have a safe, peaceful, peaceful country, he declared, and we and will expect you expect you to abide by this view too. Kaim has nothing more to say to him. If he were to insist on com confronting the police commissioner, he might be seen as questioning the authorities, which could la land him in the adult's prison. This would be easy enough to bring about for the com police commissioner, and indeed for anyone in the city-state who has stood on the side of powers that be. The commissioner glanced again towards the juvenile prison. They built the, the, that place 80 years ago, he said, which is to say the very first building they made with the present po political system came into being was a prison to throw young offenders into. Kaim knew this. For Kaim, whose life went on forever, events of 80 years could well have happened yesterday. 80 years earlier, this country has, had experienced a cult de diet, or whatever the hell the word is. The revolutionary government ruled the people under a military dic dictatorship and jailed every last person suspected of disturbing the peace and order. The government was especially wary of young, younger criminals. There's a, there is, ah, there's a limit of how serious a kid's crime can be, but let them get away with those, and the next thing you'll know, they'll be doing really bad stuff. They might be satisfied with shoplifting at first, but soon they'll get, but soon they're into burglary, burglary muggings. They start using weapons, and in the end, they think nothing of killing people. You have a night. You have to nip them in the bud. The kids sent to prison were fed the absolute minimum to keep them alive. No doctor saw them if they felt sick or were injured. Subjected to such harsh imprisonment. They scummed one after another, and more than a few of them ended up as cold corpses. 
pitched out the back door. Whenever one did manage to serve out his term and return to the outside world, he found it impossible to erase the brand of loser. Children with criminal records were, were soundly rejected by respectable society. The social system was structured in such a way that nothing worked for them. Employment, marriage, even finding a place to live. Expelled by, by society, these boys and girls returned to crime as, as a way to stay alive eventually ending up in, a, in adult prison. With a bitter smile, the police commissioner said to Kime, I'm sure this is all terrible to an outsider like you. Kime answers with a slight nod. The, this only served to increase the bitterness of the crimp commissioner's smile. I know what you're thinking, he said, and to tell, the, tell you the truth, I sometimes think the system is a little too harsh on them too. But you have to realize that but you have to realize that we are not just punishing bad kids. We're also holding it up as an example to the good ones. What would they think if they saw an ex criminal saw the ex criminals out on the street street again, walking along like nothing ever happened? They'd figure out that even if they got their hands dirty and spent a few years in jail, they could just go back to their old lives. That society's punishment is no big deal. That they can get away with murder. We won't want our kids to be like that, wouldn't we? I mean, would we? So, the on only thing is for us grown-ups to teach them, look at, the look at those guys, we can say. All it takes is one bad deed and your life is over. So you'd better listen to your parents and teachers and be good. He definitely had a point. Kime was willing to grant him that. But still, the commissioner must have noticed a hint of shadow, cro shadow crossing Kime's face. And he sh shifted his tone of voice. With brutal conviction, he declared, the authorities have received word that there is going to be a cult. Of course, the military have every everything under control, so there is no nothing to worry about. They could suppress it right now if they wanted to. They could easily attack the allegation, alligators and capture the ringleaders of the pot, of the plot. In this case, though, they have decided to let it, let it get started in order to smoke out every last one of the whatever elements. According to the government's intelligence, the uprising was scheduled to occur that very night. We are prepared for just about any, e just about any, eventually. Ah, uh, I think that's it. I don't know for sure, but there is always the possibility of the unexpected. If there were a riot inside the juvenile prison, time to concede with, a, with the rebellion, that could be a real problem. This is why Kaim has been hired as a temporary prison guard, a bodyguard for the state. We're counting on your skills as a se seasoned warrior, which is why we're, we've, uh, we're entrusting you with such a major responsibility. Be sure you live up to our expect expectations. If you have to resort to violence, we have no problem with that. Whatever, whatever t you do, it will be for the sake of law and order. It will be in order to protect the happy lives of the decent citizens of our nation. Carrying out your, your duties with complete dedication of body and soul, the commissioner handed Kime a one-page document. It was literally a license to kill. Act without the slightest restraint. All the prison guards have one of these. But still, if you hesitate to impose the ultimate punishment on a single loser, that then uh, countless winners among the up upstanding citizenry must suffer the consequences. You understand, I'm sure. Once a loser, always a loser. Rather than living with such a burden, they themselves might be happier to have you kill them and 
Get it over with. Kime accepted the document from the commissioner without comment. That completes our contract agreement. Now assume your post. With a perfectly straight face, the commissioner cautioned Kime. Just make sure you don't let any foolish compa compassion get in your way. The season was midwinter, but Kime found no hint of fire burning in the juvenile prison. In their tiny solitary cells, the young inmates wrapped in ragged blankets lay helplessly in the dark. Painful moaning came from one cell, suggesting its inmate might be running a fever. From another came unbroken shrill laughter that could only that could only the person mi person's mind had snapped. Jeez, why am I having such a hard time reading? I don't know. What you see is what you get," said the veteran guard gu guarding Kaim on his first round of inspection. Not one of those spaces should shows any life. So even if something were to happen, these pitiful creatures couldn't do a damn thing. They're losers, all right. They're breathing, but that's about it. Is there really no possibility of them being rehabilitated and becoming winners? The other guards gave Kaim a momentary blank stare and then said with a laugh and a wave, No, 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 none at all. Eighty years since the revolution and the change of uh, generations ha had replaced virtually all the people from that time. Since coming of age, this prison guard who had no memory of life before the revolution had been implanted with the idea that people were either winners or losers, and he surely never doubted it. They went out of their way to hire you, so it might be a little strange for me to say this, but I'm sure the kids in here are never going to riot. No matter how wild things get on the outside, splash a little cold water on them and they'll quiet right down. There's almost none of that you have to worry about. Almost? Well, I can't claim the... Uh, I can't claim that about every single one of them. There are even losers among the losers, unfortunately. The guard showed Kaim to the end of the hall, and there he opened the lock on the door, so thick it could be mistaken for a section of wall. Beyond here are the punishment cells. This is where we throw the ir irrigable, irrigable losers, the ones who have caused trouble on work details, the ones who have taken a defiant attitude, the ones who show no sign of remorse for their crimes. Suddenly it was clear to Kime. It was cl clear to him that he had experienced countless battlefields in his life. The punishment cells were darker and far colder than the regular cells. But from the depths of the darkness, from within each individual cell, there Im Im animated a quiet heat that could not be felt from regular cells. The people in here were alive. They were not simply breathing. They were alive with real passion. The crimes that originally got them locked up here was nothing much of a little burglary. 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 But I, I can't say it. Sorry. I know what it is, but still, I can't say it this time. I don't know why. Some person snatching, flashing a knife, stuff like that. If they had just quietly served out their terms, they'd be out. They'd be out now, living ob obscure lives somewhere. Instead, they res resisted and kept resisting. They called for better treatments of inmates. They applied for an end of decremation uh, against former prisoners. The number of their crimes multiplied until it became clear they would never get out of their life. They'll just go go straight from here to adult prison when they grow up. It'll be 20 or 30 years before they can breathe the outside air again. 
if they can live that long, which would be quite an accomplishment. The guards count concluded with a belly-shaking laugh, which was interrupted by a voice echoing from a dark cell. Stop that laughing! It was quite, it was quiet, but commanding, but commanding voice, though one that retained a hint of boyishness. A look of fear crossed the guard's face, though he quickly reverted to a sneer. This is the biggest pain we've got, he said. His name is Darren. I don't know. Sorry. He, they say he was the leader of a gang of juvenile delinquent, delinquents on the outside, but here, here he's just a noisemaker. The guard picked up a bucket of water from the corridor floor with a thin sheet of ice on its surface and heaved into the content, heaved the contents into the into Durant's cell. This is what works best for these kids. Behind the bars, the, the, the drenched boy has rolled himself in, up in a ball. This should be enough for him to freeze to death. But the water itself freezes again in the early morning. So then they, their hair and eyelashes and any other hair they got get coated in ice. Some of them have lost fingers and toes to frostbite. The guard laughed again. Duran lay there curled up, but his eyes were shining with a with such intensity it was as if he was trying to melt the ice with the heat seething, seething in his breast. Kime knew those eyes. Those were the eyes of a warrior, and not just any warrior, but one of the one of the very front line in a losing battle who watches for a chance to turn the battle in his favor. And Kime knew something else that the system was begin was beginning to unveil. It kept it had kept the people in a state of suspension for eighty long years, even since the revolution. But the very moment of its uh, undoing had arrived. The prison fire started that night. Kime, it's the cult! The guard came running to report the situation on the outside. Fires have been sent through, throughout the city, he said. This was, of course, the uprising that government in, intel, intelligence had anticipated. Martial law was declared, and the government was mobilizing the entire police force and army. Yeah, word had come too that the that the ringleaders were already under arrest. One element, however, had been wholly unanticipated. The guard informed him: the wind is strong tonight. Feigned and by unseasonable winds, the flames were racing through the city. On orders from the com commissioner, we are not the fight fire ugh, fight fires in the juvenile prison. Is that clear? Do not engage in firefighting here. In other words, no one would be coming to save the inmates. It can't be helped, said the guard. The army and the fire department have all all they can do to put out the fires in the city and evacuate the people. They can't spare any men to protect this place. And we're and we've been ordered to join in the rescue rescue effort in town. I guess that means we let the kids out. This was a given, Kaim assumed. Left locked up in their cells, the young inmates would burn to death. Don't be ridiculous, the guards shout back, or shot back. These kids are all losers. We're, we're going to the trouble of locking them in here, and now we're supposed to let them out? Are you serious, Kai replied. Are you serious? I can't believe you'd say something, say anything so stupid. I'm telling you, they're losers. We don't have time to save them, but we certainly... 
and we're certainly not going to let them run loose. The commissioner would never allow such a thing. He obviously meant every word he was saying. They were planning to let them die. The flames were spent were spreading quickly and screams could be heard throughout the prison. There was no time to appeal directly to the commissioner, and such an appeal would only end in failure, he was sure. Give me the cell keys, Kime said. You're joking, the, co the guard laughed. There was only one thing to do. Without a word, Kime landed a punch in the guard's solar plexus. The guard went down in a heap, and Kime tore toward the clump of keys from his belt. The first cell he opened was Duran's. The boy came out looking confused. Are you one of us? he asked Kaim. Are you with the cult? Not interested, he answered. So why are you letting us go? Duran asked. Because I don't like di dividing people into winners and losers. Thanks, Duran said. Sporting a big grin, he took the keys from Kaim and turned away to start opening the other cells. I want you to come back, Kaim said to him from behind. What's that? It's an emergency evacuation. When the sun comes up and the fires are out, I want you to come back here. You kids sh still haven't finished paying for your crimes. You must be kidding. Not at all, Kaim said. If you kids run away, that'll just prove they're right. Once a loser, always a loser. <clears throat> Is that all right with you? Don't you want to show the ones who rule this country that they're wrong? That people can change? But, we're, but we'll never get another chance like this. This cult is going to fail. We can run around all you want, but they're going to catch you in the end. You'll always be branded losers. They might even kill you when they catch you. Ran turned to stare at Kime. The prison was already surrounded by flames. Against this bright red backdrop, Duran's eyes still bur burned with the fighting spirit of a warrior. This country's political system can't last much longer. The day will come when you kids can leave prison with your heads held high. I absolutely believe that. Because I believe it, I know... Ah, no, that's not it. I don't want to see you die for nothing. Kaim turns from Duran to pull the guards from the floor. Come back after sunrise. With this final ad ad motion to Duran, Kaim ho hoisted the guard onto his back and trudged away. Or trudged away. These events occurred 50 years ago. An air of freedom pre pervades the country now with Kaim, when Kaim visit, visits 50 years later. True, he does catch glimpses of young, young toughs and juvenile delinquents where the night fire thieves, but he feels this is just a sign of, of the free and easy times. An old man calls out to him, Are you a traveler? When Kaim nods, the man smiles says with a smile, you're in, uh, excuse me, you're in luck. We're having a celebration in Revolution Square today. <coughs> excuse me. I hear the grand old man of the revolution is going to attend. I'll keep going all night long. A celebration? That's right. I see you, you're too young to know what happened here in the old days. We have a cult 50 years ago on this very day. The cult itself was put down in one night, but the rebel troops set fires all through the, throughout, all through the city, so the rest of us were running around like, cra like crazy in all directions. Fanned by the wind, the flames quickly enveloped the whole city, and a lot of the city people were stranded on the sandbar downwind. I was one of them. I had a pregnant wife and baby daughter with me, so I couldn't just drive into the river to escape. 
Before I knew it, the sparks were raining down on the sandbar and I figured we were done for. We'd all burned to death as soon as the dry grass caught fire. Just as he was giving up hope, he says, a helping hand was extended to help them from, most, from the most unlikely source. The kids from the juvenile prison came to help us. They were all skin and bones, and their prison uniforms were falling apart. The prison staff hardly fed them a thing, but they pulled what little strength they had. They saved old folk, folks and children from the sandbar, and they struck, struggled to douse the fires that caught in the dry grass. I saw one boy carry a child across the river and collapse and, and die the second after he reached the other side other shore, and some of the ones who were fighting gr fighting grass fires were out outcome by the smoke and burned to death. <sighs> they risked their lives to save us. Their li own lives were not worth living, but those losers risked their lives to save the lives of winners like us. When the sun came up and they could be sure that the fires were safely out. The young inmates went back to the juvenile prison. Yes, it's true. The place was an absolute hell for, for them, but they went back inside just the same. Not one of them took advantage of the confusion to run away. They played it strictly by the rules, wouldn't you say? We were really moved by their behavior, and people started saying that maybe the, these losers had their good points after all. Maybe once a loser, always a loser was wrong. That's actually very, very true. The whispers spread throughout the country, quiet, quiet, quietly but surely. Soon the views emerged that Soon the view emerged that the treatment of juvenile prison inmates should be improved. Another increasingly wide-held view was the society ought to welcome ex-inmates more warmly once they had paid for their crimes. Finally, the change in their attitude towards loser children took the shape of dis dis uh, uh, disfaction with the political system that had c continued to foster such a dictatorship and 40 years ago a second cult occurred. The next cult took the shape of a citizen's revolution that involves the mass of, and for that reason it succeeded. That's how the form of government we have, have today got its start. Listening to the old man's reminiscence, Kaim finds himself smiling and nodding again and again, deeply moved. The last thing the old man tells him is the name of the hero who had led the revolution and became the first president of the new government, Duran. Tens, yeah, tens of thousands of people have gathered in Revolution Square. As fireworks are sent aloft and the brass brand plays and the roasting national anthem, the grand old the grand old man of the revolution takes on the, takes to the stage amidst thunderous cheers and applause. Duran, Duran, or Duran, advanced in years now and have long since removed himself from the center of policies or politics, Duran still has that youthful fiery gleam in his eyes. There is no way for him to spot Kaim among the assembling uh, there is no way for him to spot Kaim among the assembling throng. Throng. And even if he were even if he were to notice him, he could never imagine that the young man unchanged from fifty years ago was the temporary prison guard on that fateful night. Still the old hero proclaims people can change. There are no winners or losers. This wor his words are greeted with cheers and fireworks and the excitement of the of the celebration reaches its peak. Kaim makes his way to a stand at the far end of the square and buys himself a cup of liquor. He realizes his cup t 
to the hero of the revolution, who from this distant vantage point appears to him no larger than a speck. He downs the drink in a single breath. With the intensely strong liquor has passed his throat, it leaves a sweat and mellow aftertaste. The end.